Hi, my name is Brad Miller and this is chronicallyhuman.co and today I wanted to talk about the opioid crisis and how the federal government uses that to rebrand the war on drugs to further spread its control over the over the healthcare system in America and how that's not a great thing. President Trump recently gave away his salary his third quarter salary to the Department of Health and Human Services and for quote unquote education for uh, the epi opioid epidemic and that fifty to sixty five thousand dollars would do a lot more if that was given to another organization outside of government government is inefficient the war on drugs uh, drug prohibition has caused the majority of opioid related deaths because of tainted bad heroin that's flowing out there it's tainted with fentanyl and the people who are taking it don't know that there's fentanyl in it and that's due to the fact that they have to go to the black market to get that product the health and human services department has a one trillion dollar budget how do you think healthcare is doing in america right now it's doing terrible why would you give them any more money and it's largely due to the fact that individuals aren't free to make their own health care choices. Government is involved in every layer, and that has driven up the cost tremendously. Now, there's an organization called MAPS, and that's the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelics. And what they're doing is their mission statement is to get cannabis and psychedelics into the hands of doctors and psychiatrists to help people with PTSD, anxiety, depression, and addiction. And what they've done is they've uh, funded a study with MDMA, which is having absolutely fantastic results with people with P PTSD. And if Donald Trump really wanted to help people, he could give his fifty to 65000 after taxes to MAPS or an organization like that. They're actually getting real results that are, that are going to help people, millions of people in the future. Unfortunately, all these soldiers that are coming back, people who are um, victims of crime, people who have had hor horrific trauma and have PTSD, there's very limited pharmacopoeia out there that can actually help them. And MAPS has used MDMA um, in research and has had fantastic results. And guess what their budget was last year? $5.1 million. There are a lot of better ways to spend money than to give it to the federal government. To gin up hysteria over the quote-unquote opioid crisis that in the end these they're calling for billions and billions of more dollars to combat this opioid epidemic this is the DEA rebranding the war on drugs to become relevant again because they've lost the uh, the propaganda war on cannabis people know for a fact that they've been lied to by them for over a hundred years now and how can you trust those people to give you straight information about anything and when they throw around the 33,000 people that have died from opioid use it's not opioid use it's opioid overdose and it's a combination of drugs that people are taking and the main one is heroin with that's been adulterated with fentanyl that's about 70 percent of the so-called opioid related deaths and so we need to really strip away and stop conflating prescription opioid pain medication and the call to restrict that even further with people who are dying because they're using they're, they've been driven to the black market to buy substances that they don't know the purity of. And that's why I truly advocate for the legalization of all drugs, that individuals have the right to consume what they choose to and bear the consequences of that choice. Now, those tens of thousands of people who've died uh, from heroin laced with fentanyl would not have died if drug prohibition didn't exist. And so Donald Trump is actually giving money to the federal government who has directly led to the deaths of people through the war on drugs. And I think that really, really needs to stop. And if he cared about people, and if people were really concerned about a large number of people dying each year, let's talk about cancer. Cancer kills about 600,000. Cardiovascular disease is something that's probably going to kill most of the people that are watching this right now. And that's the number one killer in America, and that's over 600,000. And guess what the third cause of death is in America right now? 
It's medical mistakes. Doctors and hospitals kill about 250,000 people. That's on the extreme low side as well because reporting on death certificates uh, is not doesn't have a place for pe for coroners to check off um, medical related deaths. And so that if if people wanted to talk about helping the most people with limited resources, I think wouldn't we talk about the cancer epidemic? Wouldn't we talk about the cardiovascular ep epidemic? Wouldn't we talk about the diabetes epidemic? The opioid epidemic is just a way to get more taxpayer money into the DEA, into the F FDA, and these assorted agencies, and also to push it out at the state level as well. And it's designed to control what doctors do, and it's to, to get a, a, a more restrictive handle on health care in the United States. And it's also a state level money grab. There are attorney generals that are, are getting class action lawsuits against uh, opioid manufacturers to fund their opioid crisis and to combat their opioid crisis. Whenever you heard the word combat and government together, you know people are going to die, right? What does government do? They, they restrict, they govern, they have a monopoly on force. And when they say combat, they really do mean it. Laws are always backed by the threat of force. And so it doesn't matter if it's a parking ticket or, or if doctors are exceeding the amount of pain medicine that they're giving to a, a patient, then those got quote unquote guidelines, those are backed by the threat of force always. And so I, I would just ask Donald Trump, if you really wanted to help people, give your money to MAPS if you want to help people who are struggling. Because people use illegal substances to treat physical and emotional pain. And psychedelics have an amazing ability to help people to, to work through that and to, to become a better person uh, out of that process. And so I hope that people will understand that whenever they hear the opioid crisis or the opioid epidemic, just remember it's the federal government trying to rebrand the war on drugs and further limit your health choices. Thank you.